Amen, amen. God bless you on this lovely, lovely Sunday morning. Pastor Prince here with you from the Temple of Refuge Ministries and Studio within the lovely city limits of Prairie View, Texas. Uh, thanking God for you joining in with us on today. And I always thank God for my early birds. You know, the early bird does get the worm. And with that, we are going to give you a sneak peek of today's scripture. It will be coming from Romans chapter 1, verse 17. Amen. Romans chapter 1, verse 17. 17, and you got to love it, love it, love it, that we are able to break open this bread of life and tell of his goodness to those who have an ear to hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying unto the church. Romans chapter 1, verse 17 will be where our scripture is coming from. For today, we will open up with a word of prayer. We'll hear from the lovely First Lady, Sister Stephanie Prince, and we will try to render to God's people a refreshing, encouraging, strong, life-building word for today. Most heavenly and gracious Father, we thank you for grace and mercy. We thank you for your compassion toward us. We thank you for your provisions toward us. We thank you for your protective hedge all around us. As you have connected us to your son, Jesus, let your anointing flow freely. Let your word be received freely. Let the love flow freely, O oh God, from one saint to the other, from the non-believer to the believer, O oh God. Touch, save, and deliver only like you can. I ask that you would anoint these clay lips to speak life, truth, power, joy, and comfort. Let no weapon formed against us prosper. We trust you. We believe in you, and we lean totally on you. In the name of the Father, the Son, and of the sweet Holy Ghost, thank you, Lord, and amen. Hello, Sister Prince. Hello. How are you feeling? I'm good. You good? All right. I'm glad you're feeling good. Would you be so kind to share with us Romans chapter 1, verse 17, please? For therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith. As it is written, the just shall live by faith. My, my, my. Today I want to share with you a simple term that we've heard and probably use multiple times in your born-again life. And we're simply going to talk about living by faith. Amen. Living by faith. Now, we know that faith is a powerful tool. It's a weapon to go against Satan and all his tricks and hoodwinking that he tries to do to get us off course for however long he can, that he can sneak in and, and destroy whatever God has been trying to build. And when we understand the faith is really all we have, when the dust settles, when your money is dried up, when your figure has headed south, when even your friends are few, faith is really 
all that we have. It is all that we have. It is what keeps you going when times get tough. It is what builds you up when you appear to be so low and down. But everyone cannot or choose not to live by faith. Because just as Paul referenced to in Hebrews chapter 11, that faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not yet seen. It's easy to say I have faith until you have to exercise that faith. And a lot of people get stuck. Oh, I don't even know how to begin exercising my faith, that I could live by faith. I hear you talking, Pastor Prince, but you don't know I've been going through. I'm catching it right now as we speak, and I'm doing everything I can to try to live by faith. And yada, 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 I hear it, but y'all just don't know. It's rough, and it's truly tough out here. And I hear you loud and clear. I empathize with you loud and clear. But you got to know this. God is for us all. And I guess the first point of reference that I would really want us to know, what gets you geared to live by faith is this. You have to really and truly believe on God. Your faith can't even get off ground zero if you don't believe that God is who he say he is. You don't believe that God's son is who he say he is. If you don't believe that God the Holy Ghost is who he say he is. If you do not believe, you cannot receive nor achieve anything that has to do with God. And once again, believing will lead you back to faith. Because, see, you have to believe something in order to go forward in something. If you are in the spirit of competition, you need to believe that you have a chance to win before you go out and compete in the game. If you don't believe that you can win, why even show up for the game? So your faith is really going to be predicated on how much you believe, to whom much is given, much is required. So my belief system has to be in place. And let me help someone. We think that believing in something is how much you know about something. I, I don't have to know everything. I just have to know enough to believe in something. Hello? If I believe that I can do whatever I speak to existence, I put out in the atmosphere, it's not going to happen until I believe it. And as I believe it and start moving in it, my faith begins to build. My strength begins to build. Because now I'm believing and my faith starts to grow. There were a couple of things that Romans one seventeen displayed, and I'm asking Sister Francis she would prepare to read it one more time, that, that, that Romans is being so elegantly written out, of course, by Paul, the author of many. And I want you to really listen again to some of these highlights that we want to touch on, on what Paul is speaking. Sister Prince, if you would, please. For the hint, for, for therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith. As it is written, the just shall live by faith. Amen. The just shall live by faith. Well, how do I live by faith, Pastor? How do I 
grow this thing. And we talked about that at the beginning stages is believing on God. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. If you believe that, you're on your way. I don't have to know verbatimly the scriptures inside out. It'd be good to know. It'd help you increase your walk. It'd help you build your knowledge base. But you got to believe that Jesus is who he say he is. The thief on the cross never read a scripture, never went to a Bible study, never went to a church service, never gave an offering. Yet not even a tithe. But Jesus paused his transition from earth to glory and said, Today is the day that you will meet and be with me in paradise. The second order, or should I say the first order of business, once you believe on God, is you have to trust in God. Trusting in God is a lot more challenging for some than what it sounds. We have been conditioned as a society to trust no one but yourself, maybe your family, and a few close friends. But everything you must achieve in life, you're going to have to pull yourself up by the bootstraps and by golly, get it done. No. I want you to sit back right now and reflect on what you have, whether you think it's little or great, whatever you have, and know that God provided for you. And know that what you have and where you're headed whether I have to increase or decrease, trust in God that he will provide whatever you need. He said, my God shall supply your every need. And I love to highlight that because a lot of people put that S on their needs. No, 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 that's not what the word said. And another one, I'm not going to stick on this one too hard, but I'll just touch it since I opened it up. People say, well, we're going to touch and agree. No, you do not touch and agree. Stop touching and agreeing. That's why people are messed up right now. Because if you're touching something and you ain't right with God, I'm touching something, I'm not right with God, then guess what? We all going to get just discombobulated even more. You have to agree and then touch. The Spirit of God must be lined up to agree before you touch. But back to what I was originally saying said, my God shall supply your every need. That is a right now statement. Don't worry about tomorrow. God brought you through yesterday. He's going to take care of you right now, today. But you have to trust in God for that. I know sometimes the money gets funny, the chains get strange. You don't know what way is going to be made, if a way is going to be made. But I will trust in God. And by trusting in God, that builds my faith walk, that starts and creates my step, my faith walk. Believing on God, then trusting in God. Well, is that not the same thing? No, not really. I can't trust something I don't believe in. Oh, my. Oh, my. Let me help somebody make sense of that. You go for an interview for a job. Regardless of the pay, apparently you had a desire for the job or you wouldn't have showed up for the interview. You go for the interview. And in the course of the interview, the employer is saying, I believe we may have found our candidate. And when they offer you the job, they are now trusting that you are their candidate so they can move further on down the road for the enhancement of their company. 
Well, in order for my faith to grow, I got to believe on God. Now I'm trusting in God. Well, I believe God. Well, there's a little planting of the faith seed. Now I'm trusting in God. That's a little water of the plant seed or the faith seed, and things begin to move. The next thing I need to do is to rely on God. Oh, my. I know these sound so similar. But when we rely on something, that means we're trusted in something other than ourselves, believing in something other than ourselves. So I'm believing, trusting, now I'm relying. I'm not going to base it all on what I know. Because Proverbs 14 and 12 says there's a way that seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof is death. Translation, you rely on your self-wittiness, your self-knowledge, your self-worth even, and you don't even begin to rely on God. You get in the way. I wish somebody would just Say this, God don't need my help. Rely on God. Trust in God. Believe on God. And a way shall be made. Amen. Next thing you got to do, now we're believing on God. We're, we're, we're trusting on God. We're Relying on God. Now you got to meditate on God. Scripture says, I meditate day and night on the Lord. Day and night. Now let me let me help somebody understand what meditate means. Sometimes you can be meditating on God and his holy word, the richness of his word, the fullness of his word without ever opening a Bible. Because meditation is a solitary moment in thought with just you and the Lord. You don't even have to open up your mouth sometimes. The scripture tells us that even if you don't know what to say, an intercessory groan, moan, can be interpreted by the Holy Spirit to really, God, this is what they need. This is what they're saying. That's why some of them old mothers would moan and groan. And, and, and I keep referring back to my big mother, rest her soul. Every now and then she would just, mm, 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 and, and, and something about a moan or groan that can even get a prayer through. And you don't, you don't know what to say. And sometimes you're just caught up in prayer. And, and, and you might lose your thought and lose your words, and you just, mm-hmm. well, that's what meditation is. And the Lord will be able to interpret what you're saying through the spirit, through the freedom of knowing that because of my trust in God, my relying on God, my meditating on God, my believing on God, my faith in God increases. So now I'm I'm slowly but surely opening up on how I live by faith. And living by faith, as I mentioned, it could be challenging for some, but it don't have to be overwhelming. It doesn't have to be over-consuming. Sometimes you just got to let go and let God. Oh, I know you used to be in the matriarch or the patriarch of the family, and you used to holding things down, but sometimes something needs to hold you down, and it's called the Holy Ghost, the Son of God, God Almighty himself. The precious word of God. Let that hold you down and let it see you through. Once again, it's not about you knowing every word verbatim from Genesis to Revelation. I could be like, in the beginning, God created the heavens and earth. I believe that. 
I'm going to trust in that. I am going to rely on that. I am going to meditate on that. When you get to the New Testament, John 3.16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. I, 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 I believe on that. I'm going to trust in that. I'm going to have to rely on that. And I'm sure enough going to meditate on that. Those two scriptures alone can have you hearing, well done, thy good and faithful servant. You were faithful over a few things. God only knew two scriptures, but the two you knew, you believed on. The two that you knew, you trusted in. The two that you knew, you relied on. The two that you knew, you meditated on. And when you can get that, baby, that's half the battle. That's half the battle. And I I want to also share this with you. My final thought on this is that you don't give up on God. I don't care how high and hard the wind is blowing in your life right now. Don't you give up on God. I don't care how deep the water is that you're wading in right now. Don't you give up on God. I don't care how much money and bills you owe and what you don't have in your account, don't have anything stashed, don't have a nest egg. Don't you give up on God. You got to believe on him. You got to trust in him. You have to rely in him. You have to meditate in him. And this too shall pass. Each and every one of you that are listening to me right now, you got more faith than what you realize. It took faith for you to wake up this morning to want to hear a word from the Lord. It took faith for you to reach out to our broadcast, hoping that God would have a word for you. It took faith for you to even share what the Lord is doing and how the Lord has blessed you through this ministry with others, whether they receive it or not. But you have more faith than what you realize. So the next time trouble come a-knocking at your door, don't panic. The next time struggle tries to hold you down, don't give in. The next time worry tries to infiltrate your spirit, don't let it overwhelm you. I want to share this final scripture with you when I ask Sister Prince if she would be so kind to help me out with this. Uh, Sister Prince, if you could, um, Psalm 147, verse 3. Read that when you could. Psalm 147, verse 3. I want you to really, really Focus and pay attention to what David is saying here. Go ahead, Sister he Prince. Heal, he healeth the broken in heart and bindeth up their wounds. My God. He healeth the broken hearted and bindeth up their wounds. Let, let, let me help you. Now, David knew about suffering. David knew about being in the graces and out of the graces of God. David knew the following things that we just touched on. David believed on God. When the anointing poured out on him as a child, David trusted in God. When he faced Goliath, 
he relied on God when he became king and he meditated on God day and night. And even through his shortcomings, David never gave up on God. Some of you listening right now are hurting. You're dealing with life. You're bogged down by problems. You're worrying about money. You're challenged with health concerns. But I want you to start living by faith right now. I want you to exercise your faith right now. Why? Because God heals the brokenhearted. He heals them. And he binds all of the wounds from minor to major. Bring it to the Lord. And he'll cast it out. He will deliver. He will protect. He will heal. He will provide. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. And we think that it's about a physical house. But you're exercising your faith right now through this spiritual house. Wherever you're hearing this message from, God loves you. God is concerned for you. And God has made a way for you. I want to pray with you right now, wherever you may be. And if you happen to have someone around you, I want you to grab that person by the hand. And I want both of you to surrender together by lifting your hands up and say, Lord, I surrender all to you right now. I'm giving it all to you right now. And if you happen to be by yourself, you just lift your hands by yourself and say, Lord, I'm giving it up to you right now. I surrender all to you right now, God. I surrender all. I surrender all. All to Thee, my blessed Savior. I surrender all. Most heavenly and precious Father, I want to first say thank you for being my protective head. I want to thank you for being my meal when I was hungry. I want to thank you for being my water when I was thirsty. I want to thank you, O oh God, for being my shelter in the storm. I want to thank you for being a wheel in the middle of a wheel. As I'm surrendered to you right now, God, I invite you in to have your way. Remove anything that's not pleasing unto you, O oh God. Clear my thoughts, clear my tongue, clear my ways, clear my habits that are unpleasing to you, that I could hear well done, thy good and faithful servants. Lord, as we make our personal journeys in this thing we call life, remind us that we're not alone. Remind us that even if we feel abandoned, 
we feel naked and unprotected. You promised that you would never leave us nor forsake us. God, we ask you to pour out your spirit. Feel the voids. Bridge the gaps where we fall short. That thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. We give you all the praise and all the glory. We can search all over and find no one like you. Thank you for protecting our families. Thank you for traveling grace. Thank you from keeping us from the evil one. Now, as we surrender to God, help us to have mercy on others as you have mercy on us. Help us to have compassion toward others as you have had compassion toward us. And if we're going to be guilty of anything, oh God, let us be guilty of living by faith. Let us be guilty of walking by faith. Let us be guilty of talking by faith. In the name of the Father, the Son, and of the sweet Holy Ghost, I say thank you, Lord. Have your way. Thank you, Lord. Have your way right now. In Jesus' precious and holy name, thank you, Lord. Amen and amen. Bless his wonderful and holy name. He gets sweeter and sweeter as the day goes by. And I wouldn't trade him for anything in the world. There used to be a song, you can have the world and all of his glory. Just give me Jesus. That's all I need. How many believe that right now? How many know that right now? Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Aren't you glad that you chose Jesus? Aren't you glad? that Jesus chose you. I pray that God has helped you on today. I pray that God has encouraged you on today. I pray that God has strengthened you on today. I am Pastor Prince. Temple of Refuge Ministries, pastor and founder in the beautiful, beautiful city limits of my little country town, Prairie View, Texas. Want to encourage you and let you know that we love you and there is absolutely nothing that you can do nor say about it. Reminding you to subscribe to Sister Jacqueline Sadberry's YouTube page, channel, whatever they call it, for Tuesday, Thursdays, Bible studies. Phenomenal job by a phenomenal woman of God. We're blessed to have her in the Temple family. That YouTube channel is Jacqueline Sadberry, J A C Q U E L I N E, Sadberry, S A D as in dandy, B as in boy, E R R Y, Sadberry. Don't forget, visit our website, obnradio.com. Send your support, tie donations in whichever way you can. Know that it is greatly needed and appreciate it. 
for the expansion and the continuation of the ministry. We're actually doing some restructuring of the radio station right now to bolster up the sound and to reach even further. So all your support and donations are greatly needed. I want to thank you all again for visiting with us. Thank you for the uh, love. I want to recognize my baby girl, uh, Jasmine. Lord, say the same. The creek don't rise on tomorrow, September the 12th. My baby girl becomes a legal woman. She's already a legal woman mentally and spiritually, but the state of Texas and the rest of the country will recognize her as being an illegal, not illegal, but a legal adult. And I want to let her know that mom and daddy loves her we're so proud of her. She's doing her thing in college. And believe it or not, she's in her senior year. Lord, say the same. She'll be graduating summer of 23. And time truly, truly flies. So I want to sing happy birthday to my baby girl. I sing happy birthday to everybody else. So let daddy sing to his baby girl. I'm going to try to do this without getting too emotional. Y'all know I'm a big old baby. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday dear Jasmine. Happy birthday to you. May God bless each and every one of you. Until the next time, may the Lord bless you and may he keep you. And we'll see you on the other side.